Hey friends, this is Trish with Crafting Cousins. Kay and I would like to thank you for stopping by and supporting our channel. Today we are being inspired by Pinterest. So grab something cold to drink, sit back, relax, and let's craft y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this sign that I picked up from Goodwill Outlet for 59 cent. This wooden letter that I also got from Goodwill Outlet. You can get letters like this at any craft store. Waverly chalk paint in ink and truffle and folk art chalk paint in white Adirondack. Some greenery that I had in my stash. Most of this came from Dollar Tree. The ivy came from the thrift store. Some ribbon and some cording from Hobby Lobby. Some wood glue and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I love this piece that I found on Pinterest and I knew that I wanted to make it. It says it came from Walmart. I'm not sure about that. I just knew that we could do our own spin on it. I'm going to start off by taking the hangers off of this little sign that I got from Goodwill Outlet. It's going to be hanging in the portrait fashion and these were not situated right. Then I'm going to use my heat gun and I'm going to remove all the stickers from the back because we need to paint it as well. Now I know that sticker said $4.99 but since this was at the outlet I got it for $0.59. Cent. That silver paint is actually textured, so I grabbed my little sander and I went over the front of this. Then I'm going to clean it out and I'm going to come in with my Waverly chalk paint in ink and I'm going to paint the whole inside. Now I didn't worry about taping mine off. You can if you're worried about it. I just used a flat brush and I took my time around those edges and was able to get it really close without the tape. Once that paint is semi-dry, I'm going to come in with my truffle chalk paint and a brush and I'm going to do the frame and the back of my sign. Now, I would have preferred to stain this. That is the look that the one from Pinterest had. But since this sign was already painted, stain wasn't going to work. And this truffle chalk paint actually comes out a really nice shade of brown once it is dry. Now, if you don't have a sign like this, you can get the unfinished wood signs at Hobby Lobby. And then you would be able to actually stain your frame and make it look exactly like the one from the Pinterest. While our paint is drying on our sign, I'm going to paint my letter using my white Adirondack chalk paint. I gave it one good coat and set it aside to dry. Once my paint is dry on my sign, I'm going to add my hanger back to it. I found the center and marked it with a pencil. Then I'm just going to put my hanger on there and use my awl to make some starter marks. Then we'll just screw on our hanger and that is ready to go. Now I'm going to lay my letter out so that I know where I want it to be. Then I'm going to take my ribbon and I fold it over itself until I have two loops on each side. We're going to gather that up in the center and I'm going to cut another piece of ribbon to be my tails. I put it behind my loops and then I'm just going to scrunch it all up and take a piece of my cording wrap it around the center about five times, tie it into a double knot, and then trim off my tails. Now we just have to fluff out our loops. All good bows need a lot of fluffing. Then I'll take my tails and cut them at an angle. This is called dovetailing, and we have a cute little bow. For my greenery, I just grabbed some pieces that I had in my stash. These are left over from other projects. I took four pieces of this fern and I'm going to glue it two pieces on each side. 
Then I took some of this ivy. I got this at the thrift store and I've just been cutting pieces off of it. And I'm going to use my heavy duty staple gun to staple that down. That is going to hold better than just the glue. And with the wire in there, it keeps the staple from going all the way through the wood. I took two more small pieces of that and I'm going to staple those in place. Then I used some of this boxwood from the Dollar Tree. I just cut a couple pieces off and stick those under my staples. I'm going to put my bow there to see how I'm liking it so far. And I decided that that greenery needed breaking up a little bit. So I took some of this baby's breath from the Dollar Tree and I cut a bundle for each side and I'm going to stick those under those staples as well and just secure that in. Now for our bow I'm going to use some hot glue. I put down quite a bit and stick my bow into it. Then I'll use my staple gun and put a staple in each side of the loops and once we do that this project is complete. it's Trish. For this project I'm going to use this house shape that I got from the Dollar Tree. I did break it when I was trying to get this piece off but that's okay we can still use it. Some folk art chalk paint in white Adirondack and some Waverly chalk paint in hazelnut. Some wording that I cut out using my Cricut. If you don't have a cutting machine though you can still make this. Hobby Lobby has some really cute font stickers. Go grab a couple of those and it will turn out just as good. Some twine from the Dollar Tree. Some florals from the Dollar Tree. And my glue gun and some glue sticks. The inspiration for this project came from this pen that I found on Pinterest. I loved it and I knew that we could make our own with just a few items. We're going to start off with this house from the Dollar Tree. It did break when I was trying to get that love piece off. It was glued on there really good, y'all. I used my heat gun and everything, and it still broke a chunk out of it. But I just took my little spatula and got off the rough edges and then used my sander and sanded it down until it was as smooth as possible. A little paint will actually cover what is left. Now we are going to take our white Adirondack chalk paint and I do end up giving it two good coats. I'm only painting just the top of this. I wanted to leave the edges that brown color and since it did have that piece that was missing out of it, I had to give it a coat, let it dry, and then give it another coat. But once that dried, I was pretty happy with the results. Once our paint was dry, I wanted to try to get the same look from the one in the pen. So I took a chippy brush and some hazelnut paint and I did a dry brush over it. But I really felt like that it was too heavy. So I took a little more of my white paint and loaded it onto my chippy brush and did another dry brush over that. And I thought that I was able to achieve the look that I was going for. Now to make my little bundle of flowers, I didn't have the same flowers they had, but I don't think that really matters. I just grabbed some of the florals that I had in my stash from the Dollar Tree and I cut off some little pieces. I did decide not to use the pink flowers because even though y'all know I love pink, I wanted this to be a year round thing and I felt like the pink made it more springy. So I took some of the little white flowers and some of the eucalyptus, I bundled it together and wrapped it with a piece of twine and glued that down and that's just going to hold it together and make it easier to glue down. I figured out where everything should sit on my house and then I'm going to transfer my wording by using a piece of transfer tape. You just rub over it with something hard. I'm using a bone folder and then remove the backing. You do have to play with it sometimes with your fingers but it eventually comes off. Then we're going to put it onto our house, burnish it down and remove the tape. Now again, if y'all don't have a cutting machine, get some of the stickers from Hobby Lobby. This 
will be just as cute with those stickers. I'm going to take some hot glue and glue my little bundle down to my house. And then I'm going to take some twine and I will wrap it around about three times. I held a piece off so that I could tie a bow. We're going to trim it off, tie our bow, and once you trim that, this project is complete. Get ready for the ultimate Christmas crafting experience. Join Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs, Brandy from Making It My Own DIY, Kendra from Late Night Creations, and Kay and Trish from Crafting Cousins for Christmas Crafting Live. Mark your calendars for Saturday, September 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern when we will be going live for the ultimate Christmas crafting party, creating magical Christmas kits right along beside you. We will have two themes, Santa and Nativity, and you can choose a charming shelf sitter, a festive wood round sign, or go all out with a bundle, which includes the shelf sitter, the wood round sign, and a bonus ornament. Purchase your kit now by clicking the link below. Deadline to order kits is Monday, September 2nd to ensure we can get yours to you in time for the party. Make it a big party by inviting your friends over for a night of crafting, food, drinks, and endless fun. Let's make this Christmas unforgettable, one craft at a time. Christmas Crafting Live, Saturday, September 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss the Merry Madness. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this box sign that I picked up from Goodwill Outlet for 79 cents. I like it because it will stand up on its own. Some Waverly chalk paint in ink, some Waverly antique wax, and some folk art chalk paint in white Adirondack, some black ink, some Mod Podge, some wood biscuits. I got mine from Harbor Freight, but you can get these at any home store. A piece of scrapbook paper. I'm going to use some out of this haberdashery pack that I got from Hobby Lobby. A half wood bead some wood glue and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I found this piece by DIY Designs by Bonnie on Pinterest and I love it. This fits my decor perfectly and I knew that I had to make my own version of it. I thought this little box sign would be perfect for this project but it did have glitter on the front of it and it was kind of slick. So I took my finger sander and I got as much of the glitter off as I could. We're gonna be covering it, but I still wanted to give myself a clear surface. Then I scuffed up the paint and I used my heat tool to take off the stickers that was on the back and get this all clean for painting. Once my box was ready, I'm going to come back in with my Waverly chalk paint in ink and I'm going to paint the back, the sides, and the edges of the front. Now, I did forget to turn the camera back on until I was over halfway painting it, but I knew that you guys know how to paint, so it was okay. While that is drying, I'm going to come back and paint my little wood biscuits with my white Waverly chalk paint. I took 16 of the wood biscuits and I did stick them down to some tape. This makes it so easy to paint these. And then we're just going to paint the top and the sides. And we're also going to go ahead and paint our little half wood bead with our white chalk paint as well and set it all aside to dry. Once our paint is dry, I'm going to take a little bit of my Waverly Antique Wax on a paper towel and I'm just going to kind of go over the edges of my wood biscuits and my wood bead. Now, I'm just kind of rubbing a little bit on and then rubbing it back off. I didn't want a lot, but you do this to your taste and how much distressing you would like. 
Now I'm going to choose a piece of my scrapbook paper. I love this pack from Hobby Lobby and I knew I wanted to use this piece of paper, but I thought I was going to use the bottom of it. I love that little bird and that clock, but I was afraid that it was going to interfere with the flower design. So I decided to go with the top part. I just use my fingers and I figure out where I need to cut and then cut off a piece. And I did cut it crooked, but that's okay. We can fix this once it's put together. Now I'm going to put down a really good coat of my Mod Podge. I need a thick coat because this is pretty thick paper and then because it is so thick I'm going to put down a good coat on the back of my paper as well. Once I get all my Mod Podge on there, we're just going to flip it over and we're going to line it up on our sign, making sure that we get it straight, especially at the top. Then I'll just press it down and let my Mod Podge dry. Once the Mod Podge is dry, I'm going to take a piece of parchment paper and lay over the top of this and use my little mini heat press to go over and press out all of the wrinkles and bubbles. This just reactivates that Mod Podge and it makes it thick beautifully. Then I'm going to take my finger sander or mini sander, whatever you want to call it, and I'm going to go over the edges of this and sand down. That's going to take off all of the excess paper and it's going to blend those edges in. Now don't worry about the paint that it's taking off because we are going to fix that. We're going to take our black ink pad and I'm going to come in with a finger dauber and go around these edges and blend in those edges. I want to lightly distress the edges of this and make it blend into my black paint. And this is also going to cover where the paint came off and it's going to make it look like it came this way. I want to make sure that my flower is going to be in the middle of my sign. So I took my ruler and I marked the middle of my box. Then I'm going to take my little dauber because it was a small circle and I'm just going to trace around that to give me a circle to line my wood biscuits up on. Now we're going to take eight of our wood biscuits. We're going to go right around that circle and lay them out. I like to make sure that everything fits in perfectly before I start gluing. Then once I'm happy with it, I come back with my wood glue and a little bit of hot glue and I'm going to glue down all the pieces in my bottom layer. Then we're going to come back and we're going to do the same thing for the top layer, just making sure that we get our wood biscuits in between each of the petals on the bottom. Then we'll come back and glue those down with some wood glue and hot glue as well. The last thing we need to do is glue our little wood bead right into the center of this to finish up our flower. Then I'm going to use my ink pad and a soft, small brush. I rub the brush into the ink and I'm going to go right around the edge of my wood bead and highlight or low light, whatever you want to call this. We're just going to distress around it to make it pop. I'm also going to do the ends of my petals and the edges. We're going to grunge this up and once you get that done this project is complete Welcome aboard the Crafty Cruise Getaway, where creativity sets sail once again. Join us on Royal Caribbean's Mariner of the Seas, sailing out of the port of Galveston, Texas. Prepare to be dazzled as we stop in Costa Maya and in Cozumel. Just like our maiden voyage, we will host exclusive crafting workshops on sea days. We have some amazing projects lined up for you that guarantee something for everyone to enjoy. For the Crafty Cruise Getaway 2025, we're introducing our newest sponsor, We Create. Elevate your crafting with the state-of-the-art laser engraver and cutter, valued at over $1,500. We are thrilled to give away one of these amazing lasers as a door prize to one lucky participant. Mark your calendars for February 17th through the 22nd and join us on the Crafty Cruise Getaway for creativity, relaxation, and lasting memories. To book your spot, visit www.craftycruise.com getaway.com see you on board in 2025 thank you so much for watching today 
If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye y'all!